Welcome back to Interview Preparation Guide. Uh, this is this part two of search algorithms and we are focusing on binary search. Previously we have described what binary search is and we have given a few instances where binary search shows up um, during interviews and it's a very common search algorithm and most interviews with most of these uh, big companies they will ask for questions related to binary search because all the students or engineers are supposed to know about this so today we are focusing on part two and we'll uh, discuss another problem so we know the basic concept the array has to be sorted and given the sorted array we can do binary search and the complexity of the algorithm is log in now let's focus on problem two the problem is given a sorted array for, um, we have to search for an element, say x. But the tricky part of the algorithm is that the length of the array is not known. Since we don't know the length of the array, how can we do binary search? Because binary search, if you remember from part one of our series, it requires the two bounds to be known because every time we half the array, we take one half and throw away the other half. But to know the midpoint, we need to know both the ends. But in this case, we don't know the end, which is a very common scenario. What could happen for linked lists, for example, if you're asked to uh, search in a sorted linked list, you may not know uh, or the end may not be bounded. So in this case, suppose you have to do this and you don't have the length of the array, what you do? Let's see how to solve this problem. The key idea here is that since we don't know the end, we need to do binary search for both the element that we're looking for as well as the end of the array. We don't know the end of the array, so we need to do a binary search to find out the length of the array. So the way the algorithm works is, at the kth step, it looks for the element a to the power k minus one, the index will be k minus one. So basically it's looking for a to the power kth element in the array. And that two things may happen. That element may or may not exist in the array. If it does not exist, so this is the first occurrence in the binary search where I have accessed the array out of bound. So what I can do is I can now take the, go back to the previous step and go to a to the power k minus one step and then do another binary search between a to the power k and a to the power k plus one. So we are restricting our search to this space. So we have to do two levels of binary search, but since those are additive steps, we still have a log n complexity. Now, the first step is really to find out what, what is the end. Uh, we are not getting the exact end, but we are getting the interval that contains the end. So we start with k equal to zero and have this loop, but we have to put the loop inside loop. We have to have a try catch block because there is a possibility that you will end up accessing an element which is out of the bound for the array so in this case while true you keep doing this there is a possibility that may you may end up getting the element itself so in that case you are fine so you have a try catch block and if you go out of bound access you simply break and the value of k at that point gives you the first two to the power kth interval which is outside the array so the try blocks looks like this you access the two to the power kth element so the index will be minus one because you start from zero and then if this matches the element we're looking for, we are done, we throw away, uh, we just simply return the index, so we are done. Otherwise, if the value is greater than x, then also we stop. That means we have found the interval where x should be because we have already come out above the element where, so x is less than c, so the k interval that we had before, before incrementing k is the one that may contain x. So we stop there and you put uh, a k plus plus otherwise. Uh, so go back here. So if you get an exception, you come out, you got the interval. If c is greater than x, also you know the x has to be, be there if it exists in the array before this k. So now we have found the interval that we're looking for. So this is the interval we're looking for to the power k and to the power k minus one. So x, if it exists, it should be there. Now remember, to the power k 
may actually be outside the error bound. So again, when you are doing another binary search now in this interval, you still have to look for exceptions. So this is a simple binary search and this is what we have taught before. It's a very simple iterative binary search. Start with the begin to the power k minus 1 end to the power k minus 1 because this is the index of the last element which may be outside the array. Now we do a simple um, loop, iterative loop, okay? And in the loop, we compute the midpoint, like the way we do for conventional binary search algorithm. And then if this matches with the element we are done, return the index, we are through. Otherwise, if this is less than the element, then we have to adjust the begin and end in, uh, values for the next iteration. So if it's less, that means x is on the other half, so you move the begin to the mid. So now we search from the mid to the end. Otherwise, we simply uh, do the search between begin and mid. So otherwise, we put end equal to mid. Now, this is fine. If we put end equal to mid, that means the, the element they were looking for has to be in the array. However, when we access a mid, it could be possible that this value is outside the array bound. If that happens, we'll get an exception. And in that case, we know that we have already come outside the array. It may not exist there. So all we have to do is set end equal to mid so that we now search on the other half, on the left half, assuming it's an ascending order array. So we are searching on the begin to mid portion. So all you are doing here is having, you're doing normal binary search, but just having a try-catch block so that you can catch the exception when you go outside and accordingly modify your search interval. That's a very interesting problem and it shows up fairly often because it has very tricky, simple but tricky parts to the problem. So I hope you enjoyed our solution. We'll be back with more solutions and we'll continue our part three of search algorithms focusing on binary search in our next presentation. Have a nice day.